just as Londoners were able to sleep again after the German Zeppelin attacks had ceased during World War I, a new threat emerged, the Gotha. The Gotha G5 was the world's first mass-produced bomber. The Germans initially used it to bomb the English capital during the day, but as the war progressed, their strategy changed to nighttime raids. Thousands of citizens would take cover during the nights fearing surprise attacks, but the lack of English culture would ultimately be the German's stumbling block during one last massive raid. Still, the Gothas had a significant impact on England's history, from hundreds of lives lost to the ignition of the legendary Royal Air Force, and even a change of the royal family's name. A new type of war. When World War I began in July of 1914, no one knew the impact that military aviation would have on the armed conflict. Initially, airborne threats against Britain came from Germany's airships, also known as Zeppelins. The aircraft wreaked havoc in London with relative impunity during the summer of 1915. And by September, a more structured and lethal attack followed, prompting the English government to relocate several essential frontline squadrons for home defense. However, as the use of Zeppelins decreased with the introduction of explosive bullets in 1916, the Imperial German Air Service, or Luftstreitkräfte, opted to create a mass-produced, long-range, heavy-class bomber aircraft. It was called the Gotha Bomber. The Kaiser's Secret Weapon Developed by the Gotha Wagonfabrik manufacturer, the Gotha Bomber was a two-engine biplane design made out of a steel skeleton, wood framings, and fabric skin. This aircraft was built in complete secrecy to keep English intelligence from finding out about Germany's secret weapon. As bomber aircraft technology was relatively new at the time, the biplane had several innovations that had never been seen before. By 1917, no bomber could house more than two 112-pound bombs. However, the Gotha was capable of carrying over ten times that amount and could drop its payload with high accuracy due to a high-tech Gertz bombsite. The Gotha had a capacity for three crew members, the forward gunner, a pilot, and a rear gunner. It also had a standard armament of up to three 7.92mm Parabellum MG-14 series machine guns and an external ordnance of 1,500 pounds. The biplane had a running length of 40 feet, a wingspan of 77 feet, and a resting height of 14 feet. Two Mercedes inline piston engines supplied the power, each with a deliverance of 260 horsepower. The motors helped the aircraft achieve a top speed of 87 miles per hour and a service ceiling of up to 21,300 feet. The aircraft completed its maiden flight in 1917 and officially entered operational service in the following months. In addition, a new squadron was created to take these biplanes into war in England from their airbase in Belgium. The Battle Squadron 3 of the Army High Command, or Kagoro 3, was unofficially known as the England Geschwader, or England Squadron. The Imperial German Army chose former infantry officer Hauptmann Ernst Brandenburg to command it. He would need to start from scratch, as there were no guidelines for overseas bombing squadrons at the time. A surprise from the skies. By May of 1917, Brandenburg was ready for his first surprise attack. Because Zeppelin raids had stopped in October of 1916, the British authorities were convinced that German aerial threats against the capital were over, and thus downgraded their defenses. On June 13th, a surprise formation of 14 Gothas left their Belgian airbase and attacked London. At 11.24am, the first anti-aircraft gun opened fire from Essex, but it was too late, and the authorities had no choice but to watch as the formation bore down on the capital. The noise coming from the biplanes was incredibly loud, and many of the citizens cheered enthusiastically as they believed the aircraft were British. The England Geschwader dropped a total of 118 high-explosive bombs on the capital, and 60% of them landed within one mile of Liverpool Street Station. The attack claimed the lives of 162 citizens and injured hundreds more, the highest toll from a single raid on the United Kingdom since the beginning of World War I. Countermeasures Upon successfully completing the mission, Brandenburg was summoned back to Germany to be awarded the country's highest military order, the Pour le Merite. However, Brandenburg's joy was short-lived. On his way back to Belgium, his aircraft crashed, and he lost one leg. Captain Hauptmann Rudolf Kleiner was then appointed as commander of Kagol III, but he was not liked by the troops. Back in England, authorities struggled to come up with a plan to withstand these modern and lethal biplane superbombers. The British sent almost 100 aircraft to the skies on July 7th, but most were old and no match for the Gothas, which could fly miles higher than their English counterparts. The defense also lacked direction and coordination. Angered by the ease with which the Gothas attacked the capital, the enraged British population turned against immigrants. With this in mind, King George V officially changed the name of the royal family from Saxe-Coburg Gotha to the more British-sounding Windsor. The War Cabinet then formed a new committee to reform home defense and aerial strategies, 
with former guerrilla leader turned Lieutenant General Jan Christian Smuts as the commander. Smuts presented his ideas within a week. His report led to the creation of a London Air Defense Area, which brought together the Royal Flying Corps squadrons, searchlights, anti-aircraft machinery, and observation corps. The Royal Naval Air Service and the Royal Flying Corps also joined forces to create a single air service, which would become the basis for the Royal Air Force. It was officially established on April 1st, 1918. The British prepared for daylight raids, but they didn't know the Germans had changed their strategy after several losses while raiding coastal towns during the summer. General Kleine decided to switch to night bombings, and the English would be surprised once again. Night Raids The first night raid took place on September 4th. The Gothas took off from their base with five-minute intervals to avoid collisions in the dark. Although nine Gothas entered English territory, the biplane was hard to maneuver and only five of them reached London. Still, the aircraft caused heavy damage to the capital and claimed the lives of 16 people. That same month, a new squadron joined the bombing campaigns against London. As the Riesenflugzeugabteilung 501 team arrived at the Belgium airbase with the R-type bomber, the Riesenflugzeug, which translates to a giant airplane. These biplanes could carry nearly two tons of explosives, which could be released electrically from the aircraft's nose, but they were more volatile and challenging to fly than the Gothas. The nighttime sorties would continue through the entire month and become known as the Harvest Moon Raids. The Londoners became so unnerved by the bombings that over 300,000 people would flock to the London Underground during the nights. Soon, the population began to learn the preferred routes, times, and tactics of the Gothas and the Giants. To alert the citizens of an incoming attack, English spotters created an ingenious silent alarm that would warn Londoners by changing the natural gas pressure. The homeowners would then draw all their window curtains to make even more darkness for the Gothas. In addition, the biplanes had to field anti-aircraft barrages, powerful searchlights, and fighter planes that knew their routes. But many of them were also lost in landing accidents, as the aircraft had a heavy nose and would typically crash upon flying back to Belgium. One last raid. England Flieger soldiers got a big surprise when Brandenburg returned to the airfield in January of 1918. Wearing an artificial leg and refusing to sit out the war, he found a demoralized and crippled squadron. Nevertheless, Brandenburg wanted to show air supremacy as a prelude to the upcoming spring offensive and assembled 38 Gothas and two single-engine aircraft to fly in advance as weather observers. But this was only the beginning. Brandenburg then contacted the giant's commander, Captain Richard von Bentevenia, to ask for reinforcements. But the team had lost most of their aircraft, and the squad was morally crushed. Still, von Bentevenia offered Brandenburg his last three giants. A total of 43 aircraft would now be sent to England, the largest attack in history. On May 19, 1918, the German aircraft dropped over 11 tons of explosives over London. More than a thousand family homes and businesses were destroyed, but the number of casualties was less than expected. Most people had left the city due to the Whit Sunday holiday. The End of the Gotha The England Flieger's biggest raid ultimately became the squad's undoing. Ten of the Gothas were forced to fly back even before reaching England, while seven were shot down and only 16 managed to reach London. Brandenburg wanted to launch more attacks, but German top brass wouldn't allow it. The nights of the Gotha raids were over. Although Brandenburg's plan had mostly failed, the surprise raids still had a significant impact, with over 500 casualties in London and 350 more in nearby towns. The raids also forced the deployment of high-performance aircraft away from the front lines and affected several ammunition production lines. From the second half of 1917 to the end of the war the following autumn, 205 examples were completed, turning the Gotha into the first mass-produced bomber aircraft in history. The England Fliegers ultimately lost 24 due to anti-aircraft strikes, and 36 were destroyed in landing accidents. The United Kingdom would eventually build a defense system enhanced by radars, which would then become the backbone of the British response when German aircraft reappeared in their skies two decades later. Thank you for watching our Dark Skies video. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a specific story in the future, and don't forget to subscribe to all our Dark Documentaries channels.